Good morning and welcome. Put a smile on your face. It's Kids Day. We are about to enter into worship. Then our pastor will be ministering to us. But first, here are some important announcements. Reaction is selling chocolate-covered strawberries in the lobby today. They are $8 for a half dozen and $15 for a dozen. Also, if you've placed an order, you can pick that up today. Spread a little love today. Happy Valentine's Day. Don't miss it. Tom. Growth Track continues today. That's a four-week class that we have on Sundays at 1230. This is the best way to get involved and connected to our church. If you've signed up, please be in the overflow room after service today. This Wednesday evening at 7.30 is our reaction service. Our Fusion students and hyphen young adults will be leading us in this service. Then Brother Jared Garber will be ministering to us. It's going to be amazing. Please invite somebody to join you. There are four ways you can give. You can give online through our website. You can give on your phone through our app. You can mail your offering to the church. Or if you're in attendance today, you can drop it off as you exit the building. Thank you so much for your faithful giving. Now let's have a great service.
Stop working. Oh, even when I don't see it, you're working. 
can we really give Jesus a great hand clap of praise? Nah. While you're clapping, why don't you just say that name? Why don't somebody just say the name of Jesus? There's power in that name. There's healing in that name. There's no other name like the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. I love what I feel already. Ah, didn't I? Didn't those, we had a couple of new soloists today. Didn't they do an awesome job? Can we give them a great hand? Amen. Addie and Morgan, and our whole worship team and our band, I am glad that everyone is out here on Kids Day. We love Kids Day, amen? We are excited to be in the house of the Lord today. And before you sit down, we're going to have just a little competition. And whether you're 6 or 60, I'm welcoming you to participate in this. But it's going to be boys versus girls for just a minute. And we're just going to give out a scream, a yell, a shout, and see who, is, who has the most spirit today. So I guess we'll start ladies first. It is Valentine's Day, so we'll start with our ladies. So I'm going to count to three. And, and when I get to three, you just give out your best yell, okay? Here we go. One, two, three. That's going to be a little tough to beat. All right, guys, are we up for this? Here we go. One, two, three. That's pretty close. Let's do girls again. Girls, one, two, three. Guys, I think they may have us if we don't step it up a notch. One more time for the guys. One, two, three. I got to give that to the girls. Let's give the ladies a good hand. And you may be seated while I do some very serious foundational work for my message today. My first question for you is, why couldn't Jonah trust the ocean? Because he knew there was something fishy about it. <laughs> what excuse did Adam give to his children of why they no longer live in Eden? Your mom made us out of house and home. <laughs> How does Moses make his coffee? He brews it. <laughs> All right, this is my favorite. What animal could Noah not trust? The cheetah, because he was a cheetah. <laughs> On the ark, Noah probably got milk from the cows. What did he get from the ducks? He got quackers. <laughs> now they're just getting bad. I got to quit. Which servant of God was the worst lawbreaker in the Bible? It was Moses, because he broke all Ten Commandments at once. I need a little more crowd noise pumped in because the actual, there we go. That we good. All right, so now we're going to play a game. And I need, I need, if you're 12 or under, I want you to go ahead and stand. You can stand on seats if you want to, but I need you to, I need you to help me with this. We're going, we're, we're, I'm going to start a statement and then you have to fill in the blank and you have to finish that statement, okay? It's just things that go together. And I just need you to shout out the answer. So the first one is Adam and Eve. Good job. Good job. Yeah, give him a hand. We got the concept. Peanut butter and jelly. We got it. Hugs and seems like the girls were a little louder on that, too. They like those kisses. Peter, James, and John. Good job. Knife and... Who wants to go with fork and who wants to go with... Who's, who's going with fork? Who's going with spoon? Stand with you. No, just kidding. Knife and fork. Fork is right. Jonah and the... 
I got them out of order, sorry. Good job catching up with me. Jonah and the... Oh, Kevin, it's okay to call it a whale on kids' day. Jonah and the whale. I know it was a great fish, and there's no whale that a person could live in for three days. Shoes and socks. Macaroni and got to have cheese. Daniel and the... <laughs> Daniel and the lion's den. Good job. Batman and Robin. Paul and Silas. Saul and Pepper. David and... Whoa, whoa, whoa. What was that? David and... What's the actual answer? Oh, David and Rhonda. We missed that one. <laughs> No, actually, you were right. The answer is David and Goliath. And that's what we're going to be talking about today in just a little bit. But first, I need Lauren to come, and she's got some people that are going to be helping her to lead us in another song of worship. So they're coming right now. Some of you should know this song, and a lot of our little kids will know this song. It is Baby Shark. So... I would like everybody to stand. We will have a video. It will help you along with emotions, but me and my lovely helpers will also be doing emotions, so feel free to participate. All right, let's do it. <laughs> Awesome job, and you may be seated again. I was singing my little heart out over there and realized I left my mic on singing Baby Shark. <laughs> so as I said, today we are going to talk about the most famous battle between two men in the history of the world, David and Goliath. Now, they say Goliath was a bug, a big, unfriendly giant, a bug, or maybe a big, ugly giant. Goliath was a bug. So I'm going to show you a couple of pictures of some modern giants right now. So if they can throw our first giant up on, the, on there, up on, the, up on the screen there. Do we still have our pictures? We lost our pictures. All right. We'll have those for 11 o'clock if you want to watch in on the, on the video. But I got, I got our Goliath here and his armor bearer going to come by. This is an actual, that really is how tall Goliath should have been. So imagine that bully showing up on your schoolyard picking a fight with you. Ma imagine a nine foot, six inch giant. And that's the giant we got right here. But the fact of the matter is, 
there's a chance he was even taller than that. He was a big, unfriendly giant. He was, he was a massive guy. So why don't we give our Goliath and our armor bearer a good hand? And we're going to lean Goliath up against the pole just so you remember just how big he is as we're talking about him. And we're going to visit him again in just a little bit. But David was at the battlefield that day bringing food to his brothers. He was just there to bring some food. And I saw something in the Bible that I've never noticed before. It's great how God just reveals things to you. But the Bible says that David brought his brothers 10 cheeses. I never noticed that before. And I love cheese. Anybody else love cheese? I mean, I am extra cheese on everything. You can't have a cheeseburger without cheese. Why would you want to have pizza without cheese? Cheese makes everything a little bit better. So he came with 10 cheese. They should have been so happy to see him. Say, man, he's got 10 cheeses. Let him say whatever he wants. So he comes out. He comes out with all this cheese. And here comes Goliath out to the valley of Elah, barking out threats. Send me a man to fight me. His big old ugly, unfriendly giant. And my trip to Israel was one of the highlights of my life. And one of my favorite parts of that trip is when Jonas and I sat on the bank overlooking the Valley of Elah. And just to think about the fact that years ago, David stood right down there and fought Goliath. It was really amazing to me. But Goliath is saying, send me a man who will fight me. And Goliath curses God and curses Israel and the men of Israel. And, and, and everybody just runs and hides. And David says, what do they give to the guy that kills that giant? That's pretty interesting, isn't it? He said, what, what, what would I get if I kill him? And his brothers just get mad. They just get just go home. You, what, who's watching those few sheep? What, what, what are you doing here anyway? And, and, and they get mad at him. He's just wanting to stand up and do something that nobody else seems to want to do. But listen to this. Everybody will not be happy when you stand up for what's right. When you make a stand and you say, I'm going to live for God and I'm going to stand up for what's right. Everybody is not going to be happy with, about that. But some things are worth fighting for. You know what David said? He said, is there not a cause? Because some things are worth standing up and fighting for. Anyone who tells you that if it doesn't just fall into place, God must not be in it has obviously never read the Bible. They don't understand about the Bible because there's a lot of times it's a whole lot of work to do what God has called you to do. It takes a whole lot of effort and there's some crying and there's some tough days to do what God has called you to do. But you got to remember like David, there is a cause. There's a reason why we do this. There's a reason why we do the things we do and why, why we live the way we live because there is a cause it's worth fighting for. He said, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? Now realize that circumcision was a symbol of the covenant between God and Israel. It was just symbolic of their covenant. So what David was really saying was, who is this giant that has no covenant with God? I got a covenant with God and he doesn't. So who does he think he is talking about God like that? So listen, when we are a part of the church, when we get baptized in Jesus' name, when we get filled with his spirit, you are in covenant with Jesus Christ. You have a covenant with God. You are in covenant with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. You don't ever need to forget that. I am in covenant with Jesus Christ. I've been so proud. How many's been proud of these girls coming up praying these last few weeks? coming up, getting the Holy Ghost and letting God touch them. Let, what are they doing? They're getting in covenant with God. They just got baptized a couple of them a week ago, a couple of weeks ago. God is doing great things. I'll tell you what I hope. I hope they teach us to linger in the altar before we teach them not to do that. 
I hope they teach us that it doesn't matter when we get to lunch. Before we teach them, we got to beat everybody else to the restaurant. That kind of praying from those girls could lead us into revival. That's the kind of things that could spark a revival in our church, that could spark a revival that we're building a place that may not even be big enough for us. We are in covenant with God. We are, we are baptized in his name and filled with his spirit. Saul brings David in and he puts all his armor on David. He just stacks him up with armor. And David says, this stuff doesn't fit. I haven't proved it. I don't even know how to use it. I can't fight like this. And then he gives his testimony. He said, I've already killed a bear and I've already killed a lion and I didn't have any of this stuff. He said, so I, I think I'm just gonna stick with my sling. He said, this is what I carried out with the bear and the lion and I think I'm gonna stick with this with the giant. So the point today is stick with what works because there are some things that we know work. We we're just talking about these girls up here praying. Prayer works. Keep on praying. Prayer works. Fasting works. Reading the Bible, getting the word in your heart, that works. Being faithful to church, coming to the house of God, that works. Worship works. This is how I fight my battles. I fight my battles down on my knees. There are some things that I already know works. And because it's worked in the past, I'm going to trust and not be intimidated by this giant and change everything now. I'm going to stick with what I know works. My dad would tell, and anybody that's been around my dad for a little while would have heard this story. But he would tell over and over again at church or just at family get togethers of how one day he had a bad headache and he walked up to the front of the church and they anointed him with oil and they prayed for him and his headache went away immediately. So he said, when they diagnosed me with cancer, I knew the God that healed my headache could also heal my cancer. I knew the God that healed back then could heal now. And dad lived for decades after his cancer. My brother Charlie was born after dad's cancer. So the same God that helped us with the bear and the lion, the same God that's got you here to today, he can get you through this giant or whatever else you're facing. If God can heal a headache, he can heal cancer. If God can heal a headache, he can heal COVID. There's nothing too big for our God. The same God that was with us yesterday will be with us today, no matter what comes against us, no matter how bad it looks or how tough it looks. The same God that healed a headache can heal cancer. The same God that took care of the bear and the lion can handle Goliath. So David picked up five smooth stones. Somebody say five. He picked up five smooth stones. Now, there's a lot of theories of why he grabbed five stones. I've heard some say, David said, I'm gonna take out Goliath, I'm gonna get his four ugly brothers while I'm at it. You may ever hear, hear that? I've heard somebody say the five stones are for J-E-S-U-S. -S. And maybe that's right, if he's that prophetic as a boy, that is awesome and that's powerful. I'm gonna tell you what I think. I'm just gonna give you my opinion. This isn't scriptural, don't look for this. This is why I think he grabbed five stones. He's like, if I miss them with the first stone, then I got another stone. And I'm gonna shoot another stone at him. And if I miss again, I'm not gonna give up, I'm just gonna keep trying. I'm gonna keep shooting stones at that giant until I hit him. Listen, we gotta have a made up mind. Rejoice not against me, oh my enemy. When I fall, I shall arise. I'm gonna get back up, I'll dust myself off, I got another stone in my bag, and I'm gonna try this thing again. We're gonna keep trying till we kill this giant. We're gonna keep going till it's done. We are not going to quit. David then, he grabs his stones, 
and he runs to the battlefield. Somebody say he runs. And that at that high point in the story, while you are nervous with anticipation of what happens to David as he goes out to fight this giant Goliath, with all hearts pounding in this room, I am going to take a brief commercial break. And Nicole is coming right now. And we're going to have a little David contest, giant slayer contest. So come on. Well, he pretty much said everything I was supposed to say. We are going to have what you did giant to the, the, slayer. That's what you did to her there over here. She got up to lead the service and you just took over. And... It's Valentine's too, right? What's he thinking? All right, we're going to have a giant slayer competition. And the winner is going to be David. So I need, I need at least three. I can do maybe a couple more people of you guys to stand up that wants to Fiona. I need a couple more. That's gonna, you're going to take a slingshot, and you're going to try to hit Goliath. Anybody else? Miss Emma, Oliver. Anybody else? I'm gonna oh, show you. I'm gonna show you how come we on, do boy. It. You coming up? Oh. All right. Yeah. I at this point, I will even take some dads or young men that wish that they could have gone back in time and had an opportunity. There we go. <laughs> All right, Fiona, come on up. Did anybody else? Did one of your boys say yes? All right, you can come on up too. Girls first. I have my assistant here, Billy, who knows more about slingshots than I do. Oh! I don't know. Stay here, Fiona. Oh, wow. See, never judge a book. Tom said, that's why we get five stones. There you go. Jared, no pressure. <laughs> That's it. Taunt him. Taunt him. I'll probably hit right here. So you know. How'd you grab it? Have a winner. You're our date. No, you get to come over here, Fiona. I think he's, are you going to use her? Stay right here. Okay. Thank you. All right. We'll let, we'll let Goliath stay there. Actually, Fiona, if you could go back kind of by Todd and Mike in the sound by, by the restroom sign there, and then I'm just going to need you to run to the battlefield. Here we go. She's got high heels on too. That's awesome. <laughs> I wonder if David had high heels on. Come on. David runs to the battlefield. Woo! All right, so she gets right here. So here's, here's my question. You can take a couple more steps up. So why did David run? Why, why does he run down there to fight Goliath? See, I believe that David heard Goliath curse God. Lift that sword up. Isn't that a beautiful sword? Don't mess with Blake right now, but unless you're David, then it's okay. So 
I believe that David knew God's getting ready to kill a giant. You can't talk to God like that. You can't treat God like that and it be okay. I don't know if he's going to use a lightning bolt or maybe the earth will just open up and just swallow that dude up. But if I can run and if I can get there fast enough, maybe God will use me. Maybe God would use me to kill that giant. Maybe God would use me to do something for him. Listen, if you feel to do something good, don't just sit and think about it too much because you'll talk yourself out of it time after time after time. If you feel to do something, your brothers may not support you in it like David's brothers didn't. But if you feel to do something good, just get up and run and go do it. Don't let yourself get talked out of it. Just run down there and say, if I can get there fast enough, maybe God will use me. Maybe God would use my life to do something for him. That's okay. Give God a great hand clap of praise. <laughs> David said, you come to me with a spear and a sword, but I come to you in the name of the God of Israel who you have defied. You defied the wrong God. I come to you in the name of the Lord. And today we can say it over and over again. I come to you in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we stand here. You may have a spear and you may have a sword, but in the name of Jesus, I believe things are gonna be okay. I believe God is on our side. I believe that God is for us. And we always talk about in this battle how this Nine and a half foot tall giant is facing this little boy, David. And we look at things, but I want, you to, I want you to know how God saw things. When God looks down, he doesn't see little boy, little girl today versus giant Goliath. But when God looks down, he sees David as the giant. David's the one that had God on his side. And he saw Goliath. Goliath was the one that actually had no chance. Goliath was the one that when God looks down, he sees him as a little boy. So listen, when you've got God on your side, when you're praying, when you're filled with his spirit, like we're going to do in just a little bit, we're going to pray and we're going to ask God to just come in our heart. When God is living on the inside of you, it's not about fighting giants. You are the giant. You are, you are the one. Greater is he that is in me. Listen to this. 1 John 4 and 4, if they can throw that up on the screens. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. That's why it's so important that we pray. That's why it's so important what we were just talking about, what these girls have been doing around the front. What are we doing? We're getting Jesus on the inside of us, because when Jesus lives on the inside of us, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. I know you may be facing a giant, but if God is with you, you are the giant. So here's what we're going to do. David takes out his stone. You got, we need another smooth stone. Right, right. There we go. So David takes out his, takes out his sling you come to me with a spear and a sword. I come to you in the name of the Lord. Why don't you shoot that up there again? Boom. And, his, and when she does that, Goliath boom, falls to the ground. And then David comes running. What does David do? He grabs his sword. Why don't you grab this and hold that up? Can you even pick it up? Throw it a little. Rah, there we go. And then, and then Goliath, yeah, let's, let's be careful. Goliath comes over and choo, so he, he chops off the head. And then, and you, you want you just walk around with that held up in the air. Okay. There we go. <laughs> David runs, takes Goliath's sword, and he lifts up his head off of that giant. God still does that today. God still defeats giants today. I don't know what you're going through and I don't know what you're facing. Fiona, hold that up high. But God still takes the head off of whatever's coming against you. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. If God is for you, why don't we all stand? If God is for you, who can be against you? So now they're gonna play just a little bit of music softly. 
And I want us all just to lift up a hand toward heaven. Can we do that? Every adult, every child, every young person. Thank you, Fiona. That was awesome. Come on, why don't we just lift up our hands? Listen, it's so important, those of you that have been spirit-filled, to get it again and again and again and again. Come on, there's an anointing in this room right now. The power of God is in this room right now. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord, we love you. Oh, Lord, we love you. Oh, Lord, we love you. So here's what we do, heads back, eyes closed and mouths open. Can we just lift our hands and worship Jesus? Oh God, we love you. Oh God, we love you. Oh God, we love you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Now I need some parents and some grandparents just to become altar workers. And I want us to move around and find our kids. And go take your, take your daughter by the hand. Take your son by the hand. Let's pray for him right now. Can we do that? We're going to have a prayer meeting, but we're specifically focusing on our kids. We want God to touch our kids today. Oh, Lord Jesus. Come on, you can get the Holy Ghost today. If you've already got it, I encourage you to get it again. The worst thing that could happen is you get it one time and say, I got it, and then don't pray anymore. Oh, Lord, touch our kids today. Come on, greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Oh, Lord Jesus. Come on, this is how we fight our battles. We're in the Valley of Elah right now, and we're fighting with the presence of God. We're saying, you come with the spear and the sword, but I come in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, in Jesus' name. Oh, Lord, touch us. Oh, Lord, touch us. Oh, Lord, touch us. Come on, there's just little prayer meetings going on all over. Some of our Sunday school teachers could make your way across, across the room right now. Some of our ministers can make your way. Find somebody to pray with. Find somebody to pray for. Oh, Lord Jesus. God, you move. God, you touch us. God, you help us. Oh, come on, God can do it today. God can touch us today. God can move right now. Oh, yes, Lord, you move. Yes, Lord, you move. Come on, God's moving right now. The presence of the Lord is here right now. God's touching on kids' day. Uh -huh. Come on, let the Spirit of God overflow your life. God, you touch us right now. You touch us right now, Lord. Come on, that's beautiful. Families gathered together in prayer. Kids crying out to God. That's what it's all about. That's what this service is all about. To say, God, we still need you in our families. We still need you in our homes. God, I don't want to drop my kids off to school without you going with them. We plead your blood over our families. We ask you to touch our homes right now, Lord. Oh, reach down. Oh, rain down. Oh, God, you touch us. Here's how I want us to pray now with heads bowed all across the building. We're just going to say, God, we're sorry. Just pray in your own way. God, I'm sorry for the bad things that I've done. 
God, if I've done things that are not pleasing to you, I ask you to forgive me. God, I pray you'd forgive me of everything that's not pleasing to you. I want to lay that down right now. God, I, I, I'm telling you, I'm sorry. Maybe there's something come to mind that you've done. You can just say, God, I'm sorry for that. God, I lay that down. God, forgive me. God, I've thought things I shouldn't have thought. And I've, I've said things I shouldn't have said. I've done things I shouldn't have done. So God, in this sincere moment of prayer right now, I ask you to forgive me. God, I pray you'd wash over me with your blood. God, I know you paid the price to forgive me on Calvary. And I pray right now, Jesus, that you would forgive every sin in my life of everything that's not pleasing to you. God, you forgive me right now. In Jesus' name, Lord, I'm believing that every sin in this place, everyone that's just said, God, please forgive me, I believe you've done that. I pray a weight would lift off of people, children and adults, Lord. I pray everyone who's just prayed that, that I'm sorry, repentant prayer. God, I pray that you would forgive everyone. I pray they'd know they never have to worry about that again, that it's all forgiven. And Lord, now, as we move on to the next phase, we believe there's nothing to stop a move of your spirit. So one more time, can we just lift up our hands? And one more time, can we get our, can we get our altar workers to help us? and put an arm around somebody and pray with somebody. And let's just make up our mind. I'm not going to leave until you fill me with your spirit all over again today. Because listen, once we've, once we've repented, there's nothing to stop you from getting it. Every adult, every saint of God, if it's been more than a, than a couple of weeks since you've prayed in the spirit, since you've prayed in a heavenly language, I want you to let that go and just let God flow through you. Sometimes it's kind of like on the airplane too. They say, get your own oxygen mask on first before you help somebody else. So some of us, we just need to let God flow through us. And then let's pray with our kids. Come on, let's let God move. Oh Lord. Oh Lord Jesus. Oh Lord Jesus. Oh Lord Jesus. Oh my Lord. Come on. Come Oh, there's such a sweet presence of the Lord in this place right now. There's such a sweet anointing in this room right now. There's just beautiful little prayer meetings going on all over the sanctuary. Oh, God, we love you. Oh, God, we love you. God, we love your touch. Thank you for touching us today, Lord. Thank you for your presence today, Lord. Thank you for your presence today, God. Touch every child in this place, especially, Lord. Oh, God, I pray they'd all feel your presence. I pray they'd all know that you're with them and you're living on the inside of them and they can go to school on Tuesday knowing that they are the giant, that greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Oh, God, we thank you for your touch. And with that thought in mind, they're going to put our needs up on the screens. Those that are praying, you just keep right on praying, but we're just going to shift our prayer just a little bit, and we're going to bring our needs before the Lord right now. We're going to call some names out in prayer and say, God, there's something great on the inside of me, and I believe you can touch Jewel Hoare, and I believe you can touch Candace Wyrock. Lord, I believe you can meet every need in this place. Come on, some people of faith, call these names out in prayer. Say, we believe in you, Jesus. We believe in you, Jesus. We believe in you, Jesus. Oh, Lord. God, meet needs for Jim and Wilma Moses. God, you touch them. God, you help them. God, you reach down with your spirit. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Jackie Reem, Keely Bristow, the Holmes family, Lord, I pray for them, for Darcel, Lord, for Penny, Kathy and Dave, Lord, I ask you to move, I ask you to minister, and I ask you to touch one more time, kind of at, with the triumph, with all the triumph that David had 
when he lifted up Goliath's head. Can we just lift up a hand and say, we thank you, God, for one more day. We thank you, God, for one more service. We thank you for every child that prayed. We thank you for everyone that felt your spirit. Oh, come on, God's still moving. God, we thank you. Thank you for what you're doing right now, Lord. Thank you for moving. Every parent ought to say, thank you, God, for touching my kids. I have no greater joy than to hear my children are walking in truth. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Why don't you just look around and find somebody still praying and point a hand toward them. Say, God, God, if you're not quite done yet, we're not quite done yet either. God, touch our kids, Lord. Touch our families. Touch our girls. Touch our guys, Lord. Let something rise up on the inside of them. Oh, Lord, you move. 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 God, you touch. God, you do what only you can do, and we thank you for it. Oh, Jesus, these that are praying are going to keep right on praying. I know they've got lots of chocolate-covered strawberries for you to, to pick up or buy on your way out. Let's support our reaction students and young adults in this. Whenever you need to go, you can be dismissed, but you can pray as long as you want to pray. I am perfectly happy and fine if we're still in here praying when they come in for the 11 o'clock service. Let's let God touch us. Let's not be in a hurry today. Let's go, let's go, let's go.